Some clarity in the women's standings after a weekend full of big matchups. On the men's side, chaos looms on the horizon as preseason underdogs sit atop the league table. Plus, teams were boosted by some of the best individual performances you will see this season and perhaps some foreshadowing for what's to come. We welcome you to another edition of Summit League Spotlight. He's Darren Wallace, I'm Keenan Dixon. Man, what a week we just had. South Dakota State and North Dakota State made statements in women's hoops and remain unbeaten in league play. Darren, the Jackrabbits have beaten all three opponents by at least 18 points. They really do look like the best team in this league. Yeah, there were some questions coming into this year about just how good they'd be after all the talent they'd have to replace. They've made some statements early on in league play, but also don't sleep on the Tommies. St. Thomas, a really impressive win over the weekend. We'll get to that a little bit later. But the women's side at the top, really good basketball being played. Really, really good basketball. On the men's side, Denver was selected last in the preseason poll. Omaha was selected seventh. Both are in the top four right now. And uh, it seems like it's very jumbled up on the men's side. Yeah, if you were to ask anyone what the league standings would look like after the second yeah. weekend, I'm sure no one would have Denver or Omaha near the top. St. Thomas even, a team that for as well as they played against an ORU team that ended up you know, looking really good in the tournament, or rather looking really good in the Summit League tournament right. before they went on to the NCAA tournament, they played them really close. And the expectations for them coming into the season were relatively low. So... Three teams up near the top that you might be like, oh my goodness, how are they up there? But I think if you really follow this league and follow these teams, no surprises. There's a lot of talent on the men's side this year, and it's really showed early on. A ton of parity in this league this year as well. Opposite of what we've seen the last two seasons after Oral Roberts and South Dakota State ran through the league the last two years. Well, it's been some individual efforts that have carried some of those teams and they really stood out over the past weekend. Zeke Mayo with 25 and a game winner at St. Thomas. Talia Jones, 37 points. Tommy Bruner continues to lead the nation in scoring. Casey Moravich with the triple-double. Frankie Fiddler continues to cement his name as a star in this league. Yeah, uh, Casey Moravich, after the game, for after the triple-double she had, she said, I feel like Caitlin Clark. You know, I, <laughs> I think that just goes to show, for one, just the, the, the influence that a Caitlin Clark has, but, you know, just the type of talent that Casey Moravich is that even in a year where she's struggled a bit, she's had some injuries, she's missed some time, and maybe her numbers might not jump out at you like they did a year ago, she found a way to to contribute to her team's winning, which, you know, they, they've kind of needed to get on the up and up a little bit early on in the year. But I think they can maybe turn a corner with her getting healthy and really getting back to form. But you talk about Tommy Bruner as well. I mean, continuing to lead the nation in scoring, that's huge. I mean, he's an, a, a tremendous talent, does it all for this Denver team who, like we mentioned, yeah. sitting atop the Summit League standings on the men's side or close to it, close rather. To it, right. They are they are unbelievably blowing the expectations that everyone had for them. And a lot of that is due in large part to what he's been doing on the offensive side of the court. Yeah, Denver sitting a half game back on the men's side. We'll get to the standings later. Tommy Bruner, 25 and a half points per game, has sustained as the top scorer in the country for the last couple of months, really. Let's take a look at some of those top games from the past week. We'll start in the Twin Cities on Thursday. Full house on a frozen day in St. Paul, mid-major game of the day between South Dakota State and St. Thomas. And it lived up to the billing for all 40 minutes of this one, as it often does in college hoops, however. This one came down to free throws, and it came down to missed free throws. Zeke Mayo grabs the Raheem Anthony miss with 16 seconds, brings it up the left side, takes the fake screen from Luke Apple, and drives in for the 10-foot floater, cash. Anthony, with six seconds, brings it up the court. Under pressure, gets a shot off, but it hits back iron. And that'll do it. Mayo gets to 25 points with the big late game bucket and avenges South Dakota State's January loss at St. Thomas a year ago. The junior also added nine rebounds in the 81 to 80 win. Yeah, I mean, Raheem Anthony is going to be kicking himself because you got to think if you at least get one there, yeah. you know, you knock one, knock down one free throw, you at least maybe get to overtime if SDSU plays for the tie and goes for the two like they did. I think maybe had he made, you know, both free throws and now you got to go for a three for the win if you're SDSU instead of maybe deciding between that or a two for the tie, it's a completely different situation. But give all the credit to Zeke Mayo. I mean, there's someone. There was someone in the crowd with a hat that they said it's, it was all his fault why he went <laughs> off. I'm sure the St. Thomas fans won't want to see him in Sioux Falls at the Summit League tournament because once that guy got under Zeke Mayo's skin, Zeke went off. So huge credit to him and huge credit to South Dakota State with a big win on the road. Yeah, that clutch performance. I mean, Zeke Mayo did it. 
Dame Dalla did it over the weekend. <laughs> Damian Lillard, Zeke Mayo's mentor that he worked with over the summer. On the women's side, a big performance, ORU, South Dakota. Yeah, I mean, I was there, you know, myself, Jay Elson. It was a really great game, but I think when USD looks at this one, or rather when they looked at it immediately after, this was a game that they felt they let it slip away. I mean, Talia Jones was the star when you look at the box score. Obviously, 37 points, she lit it up. Uh, but USD, they turned the ball over more than 20 times. That's typically not a good recipe for success. And after the game, Kayla Caria said, we just don't seem to have that killer instinct we need where we can hit big shots and put teams away. Late in the third quarter, they went on a run on a 5 run to push their lead out from 53 to 50 to 58 to 50 so they're up by eight going into the fourth quarter but they never were able to really put them away go up by double digits and ORU actually clawed back near the end of the third quarter to cut into that deficit and then in the fourth quarter it was all Talia Jones and Hannah Cooper who was held mostly in check during the game but down the stretch when they needed big buckets Hannah Cooper just w simply wouldn't be denied she took anyone one-on-one -on -one off the dribble was able to get huge buckets down the uh, down the stretch and ORU kind of feels like they stole one on the road team. Yeah, big performance 37 points obviously the individual effort you look at that and it's hard to overlook it but I mean you, you talk about the killer instinct who's gonna be that shot taker there's talent for South Dakota can they figure it out they had one game last week, a little bit of time off. Now you come into this week. We'll talk about their two games coming up in just a little bit, but it was Omaha, North Dakota on the women's side as well. And Casey Baravich, it was her show all night. 20 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists for the Summit League's preseason player of the year. And her Fighting Hawks went on to win 100 to 75. They've won three of their last four after losing five straight, this was a team that it seemed like it was going in the wrong direction. They yeah. lost to a non-division one, and they were struggling going into that Christmas time. They came back and a little bit of extra juice, maybe a little extra gravy on the mashed potatoes at Christmas. Yeah, I think some of that consistency of just having Casey, you know, in the lineup, you know, getting back to herself, like I mentioned, she did miss a few, miss a little bit of time uh, during non-conference play, which that can be tough. But I think it also, in the long run, it helps your team out. And I think you're seeing right now the result of that is when you know different players have to step up and maybe be asked to do more than they normally would when you're, you know, essentially your star and best player is out. You know, down the stretch, once they're back in the lineup and integrated. Everyone else is used to having a bigger role so that when their load lightens, they can play even better. So North Dakota, I know it, it, it might have looked grim for them after losing five straight, but then you mentioned they went through their last four. They were heading into the meat of the Summit League play, of, of Summit League Conference play. North Dakota might not be a team that's as attractive on paper when you look at you know their stats and their box scores and whatnot, but when you have Casey Barabich and you have that lead player, they can carry you a long way, so I wouldn't sleep on the Fighting Hawks just yet. They have a fun one this week against a high-powered Oral Roberts offense. And, I mean, it, it was them again on the women's side, except on the wrong end. Yeah, it was an eventful Saturday <laughs> uh, afternoon in general. But that game in particular, ORU and St. Thomas came down to I me. Mean, all, all, the, all the stuff that happened before the third quarter seems almost non-existent. ORU found themselves on kind of the flip side of their game at USD on Thursday though. So they have two road games over the weekend. Oral Roberts led by eight with a little over three minutes to go. It would take a big run by St. Thomas to make some magic happen. The thing is though, they did exactly that. Keenan, Joe Langbin, Amber Scalia, and Jade Hill sparked the run that would make it a 66 to 64 ball game with 206 left. But then it was all Jade Hill for the Tommies down the stretch. She scored eight straight points, including the buzzer beating three pointer to give St. Thomas the lead with 0.1 seconds to go. And ultimately the win or you wasn't able to do anything with that 0.1 second. So huge win for Ruth Sin and company because they were a team going into the weekend that I thought they could really cement themselves as a top team on the women's side. And it looked grim for them down the stretch, but somehow magically, thanks to Jade Hill, Joe Langbin and Amber Scalia, they're able to overcome that eight-point deficit near the end and really pull off almost a miracle win. I mean, three and one start to league play. I don't know if anyone was necessarily expecting this from St. Thomas right now. After the season they had a year ago, they brought back most of the same players. The roster looked the same, but it goes to, to a testament of Ruth Sin's coaching ability, and she's done it for years. Yeah, she's one of the best in the biz. And another who's one of the best in the biz, also right there in St. Paul. After that heartbreaker at home on Thursday to South Dakota State, the professor, Johnny Tower, took his St. Thomas side to Tulsa for a rematch of last season's Summit League semifinal against Oral Roberts. 
and Kendall Blue. Achani Lee and Drake Dobbs combined for 49 points. Parker Brooklyn added another 10. And Lee bagged 16 points coming off the bench, looking like Lou Will out there. 87 to 76, the win for St. Thomas over the reigning champs on the road. A massive win after that loss at home. I mean, they, this is probably the, one of the biggest wins that St. Thomas has had in program history. Yeah, it says a lot about the resiliency of that team. It probably would have been easy to go on the road to an Oral Roberts team who's, you know, they're also trying to find their footing as well and could have found their footing against a top team at home. But St. Thomas, they weren't deterred. They went in there, they took care of business. They went convincingly too. It's not like they just escaped. You, you know, it, it might have been easy to just kind of lay down after the loss that they suffered on Thursday. Yeah. They bounce right back, they get a huge win. Cre credit to Johnny Tower and the job that he's able to do with those guys over there. Yeah, his coaching ability has been sensational and we see it week after week up at St. Thomas and the success that they've had with uh, that squad that, that's been pieced together over the last couple of years. Right, but uh, back over uh, to the, or excuse me, staying on the men's side, uh, one of our favorite players that we love talking about, Frankie Fiddler, and what a game it was. It was another barn burner. It seems you've had a lot of overtime games, games coming down to the wire early on in this uh, Summit League play and even the Big Sky Summit League challenge. Uh, but Denver, or excuse me, North Dakota State and Omaha was a game that went to overtime. And it kind of sums up the state of NDSU and Omaha basketball right now. North Dakota State, they get almost its entirety of their production from its returners and, you know, Bowden Scumberg, Demari Wheeler Thomas, and Jakari White. Outside of that, it's a lot of question marks and inexperience and closing games. And that would come back to bite them as the Bison. They weren't able to really put the Mavericks away. Uh, Omaha forces OT and then they go to OT and it's just the Frankie Fiddler show. Frankie Fiddler, you know, we laughed at him a few years ago. Not really necessarily laughed at him, but it just seemed preposterous at the time that, a, you know, a player on a team like Omaha who hadn't really proven themselves as far as results in the Senate League, there's no way they could have one of the best players in the league. But I think this year, He's, he's done more than enough to shut every every doubter up. You know, 34 points, 11 for 19 from the floor. He's been a leader for them and playing as good as anybody, not just in the Summit League, but in this whole country, yeah. Keenan. I mean, Frankie Fiddler has been every bit as good as advertised and huge credit to Chris Cartfield because in this second year with this team, he said that last year they had a lot of guys in their first year playing Division One basketball, but you're seeing just how much that one year of experience can go, and they look like a much different type of program. Right Man, now. it's massive. And Frankie Fiddler has been sensational, averaging 30 and a half points per game in Summit League play, dominating. Another player that's dominating is Tommy Bruner. A year ago, Denver held an 18-point lead over South Dakota State at home with 14 minutes left. The Jackrabbits roared back outscoring the Pios 39 to 16 to come back and win on the road and key February victory. On Saturday it was similar, but this time Denver didn't take their foot off the gas, scoring 99 points in the 99 to 80 win over South Dakota State. Tommy Bruner scored 26, Lopez San Vicente added 23 in Denver's first win over the Jacks since 2017. Darren, just seven turnovers for the Pioneers, the ninth time they've done that this season finishing inside of single digits and turnovers protecting the rock with the high scoring offense is tough to do. I mean, what more can we say about Denver that hasn't been said? You know, Tommy Bruner is one of the best scorers, if not, I mean, quite, quite literally the best scorer yes, in, the in the country right now. Uh, and everyone else is stepping up. I mean, I think it's, if it's not Tommy Bruner scoring 25 plus, you've got other guys finding areas to fit in. I think the addition of Jackson Brinchley is just really impressive to me because he's not going to always blow you away in the box score, you know, because, you know, in, in, in this one, it wasn't even him. Right. But I think he's just a glue guy. He's played in the Pac 12, he's played in big venues, he's played in huge high stakes games. Not to say that Denver has never, but I think adding that guy that's going to be a starter that's played in super high leverage games before just gives you that extra confidence. You know, he plays good offense, he plays good defense, and Tommy Bruner right now playing as good as anybody in the country. This Denver team, I mean, to do what they did against South Dakota State, 99 points and less than 10 turnovers, I mean, that, that's almost perfect basketball right there. It's hard to beat, and uh, it's been a pretty special performance. By the way, for San Vicente, 23 points is a career high for him. Um, they, it seems like they always have someone new notching a career high. <laughs> Let's look at the current Summit League standings after two weeks of play. St. Thomas and Omaha are at the top on the men's side at 3-1, followed closely by Denver and South Dakota State at 2-1. Reigning champs Oral Roberts are 2-2 two two after their losses to Kansas City and St. Thomas. And I think it goes without saying the real surprises here are Denver and Omaha. 
the programs that were based on their preseason rankings buried coming into the season. Yeah, I mean, you had a team, you had a player in Frankie Fiddler who was able to make the, you know, all preseason team. Yeah. Outside of that, there were little to no expectations of this Omaha team. But you look at how they've started three and one. You might see the overall record and think, oh well, how impressive are they doing? A year ago, I mean. They're they're pretty much already to their Summit League win total a year ago through just four games. That says a lot about the development of the players of that program. I mean, another player that's really impressed me besides Frankie Fiddler has been Markel Sutton. The 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 way he's been playing has been a great addition to you know the way Frankie's been playing. You look at St. Thomas. You know, we talk a lot about uh, Johnny Tower, but Parker Bjorklund he could have not played this year. He came back yep. for another year. He had another year of eligibility. He decided to come back because he felt like they had some unfinished business. You know, they lost to ORU last year in the semifinals and he felt like they had you know kind of left something out there and he came back to really claim what he thinks is his you know Oral Roberts kind of being there in the middle of the pack right now I'm not going to say that they're going to stay there the rest of the way they're just so talented and they yeah. can score so much that can't rule anything out but just the way things are shaking out on the men's side it really is it's anyone's ball game I think when it all comes down to you know the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls <laughs> I I'd hate to be someone with anything riding on picking one team to win because right now I mean Kansas City is down there at at one and three North Dakota is down there at one and three as well South Dakota one and two and I don't I wouldn't be surprised if any of them went on a run so right. the, the men's side is is truly all over the place right now yeah and you talk about those individual performances North Dakota got 30 points from BJ Omod over the weekend as well. It, these are teams that can do something. And Kansas City lost in double overtime to North Dakota State in, in Kansas City on Thursday. There's a lot that's happening here. It's very early. Obviously, we're talking about it now because, you know, it's good basketball. <laughs> on the women's side, South Dakota State and North Dakota State, speaking of good basketball, they remain undefeated at 3-0 in league play. Oral Roberts and St. Thomas are tied in second but we got some clarity over the weekend after some of those big results, including Oral Roberts and uh, rather St. Thomas and South Dakota State. Yeah, I think a lot of people looked at that St. Thomas loss to South Dakota State and were just kind of saying, oh, just, you know, take of South Dakota State, they're going to run away with this thing. But great job by St. Thomas to bounce back. Like I mentioned earlier, they were down eight points with three minutes and seven seconds left to play. That's it's a tough deficit, especially when you're playing college ball, you know, fouls become an issue. And, and you know, if teams get their free throws, an eight point lead with, you know, just about three minutes left. That's almost game over right there. Right. But for St. Thomas to come back and, and rally the way they did says a lot about them, says a lot about what Ruth Sin's able to do as a coach. Uh, shout out to North Dakota State because I think a lot of people kind of picked them middle of the pack. Wasn't really sure what we were going to get out of the Bison team this year, but huge credit to them to you know start off the way they did. They started this on the road at South Dakota you know, against a really good South Dakota team, yeah. and they blew the doors off of them. And since then, they've just been playing extremely good basketball. So a huge shout out to them. So yeah, the, the top of the women's uh, the women's standings, I think we're just going to see those kind of same four or five teams jockeying for position. But South Dakota, they're one and two now. They're sitting closer to the bottom. I would be shocked if they finished there. They're definitely going to go on a run at some point during conference play. Yeah, and it's a talented team that we saw played very well in non-conference play. Played some tough opponents, Michigan, Arizona, DePaul. But they have struggled to find their way here in league play. Again, it's very early. We'll see what happens. When we come back, Frankie Fiddler talks about his rise to Summit League stardom after another week of big performances. Get ready, Whipple. You go right, I go back. Put it right, trip and sweat. Ain't even half time yet. Whipple. Bounce them off the floor. Get them, check the score. Yeah, we get them. They ain't even know what to do. From the first shot to the final buzzer, don't miss a moment of the Summit League basketball season. Midco Sports Plus is the streaming home for all your Summit League teams. Subscribe today for exclusive content, expert team analysis, complete game coverage, and every single minute of Summit League action. Subscribe and watch at midcoastsportsplus.com. The Ticket Smarter Peak Performers of the Week have been named in the Summit League. 
North Dakota's Casey Bravich after her triple-double on Thursday. And Frankie Fiddler from Omaha earned the award after his big week that included two key wins for the Mavericks. Both players have settled in and have been playing at different levels since the start of league play. Bravich is up to 20 points per game, while Fiddler is averaging 30 points through four league contests. During the 2019 NBA playoffs, Draymond Green proudly proclaimed that he is the best defender in the NBA. It was a statement that was received with immediate criticism. He responded the next day saying, quote, as a competitor, you're trying to do something meaningful. If you don't have that mindset that you're the best ever, you've failed already. 16 months ago, Frankie Fiddler declared that he believed he is the best player in the Summit League. In a league that included an All-American and an NBA draft hopefuls, perhaps Fiddler was just a year early. Still, it's that mindset that has allowed him to take the reins of an upstart Omaha team and push them to first place in the Summit League. Like Draymond Green, Fiddler has played with that confidence on his sleeve and he's making a real case at being the best in the Summit. Drives through the lane, hands it off, Fiddler a long three, he's gone, and Frankie got fouled! In an article that you wrote, you talked about being from the Omaha area, and growing up, and uh, kind of seeing the transition from Division Two to Division One. You, personally, are kind of taking this program to the next level. What has happened this year in terms of your confidence that has allowed your game to rise to this level? Fiddler, who's had the ball in his hands a lot, deep three, left wing, goal! My mindset this offseason has just changed from previous years. I wanted to, you know, be be the guy that, I've said it before, be the guy that gets this team uh, to the tournament. Fiddler, left wing three, good! Frankie's got 30! We're able, we're capable of, of making a big jump this year, and I think, you know, the past month, past two months, we, we've actually, as a team, finally starting to believe it, and I think that's a big part of why we're, we're playing so good right now. The quote where you said that you're one of the best players in the conference, you're playing like it right now. That was 16 months ago that you said that. I, I matured a lot. Uh, I still think that, but at the end of the day, you have to prove it, and I think that's what my mindset is now is not just talk talking you go out and and show teams and show you know everyone in the league that that you're one of the top players and fiddler was just named one of the five oscar robinson national players of the week after 63 points and 19 rebounds and omaha's two wins over north dakota and north dakota state we talked about it earlier in the show but he's been incredible this season and his 30 points per game in Summit League play lead the league by a large margin. Yeah, I mean, he, he he believes he's the best player in the conference, and he's showing it this year. And I got nothing but respect and, and, and honestly, admiration for what he's been able to do because this is an Omaha team that, like we've said, came into the year with almost no expectations, but they find themselves sitting at second place on the men's side, second behind St. Thomas, who, again, a really good team there. But Frankie Fiddler's been leading a team that's been playing well above, you know, punching well above their, their expected weight. And, you know, I just got nothing but respect for him. And also a huge shout-out to Chris Crutchfield because this is, you know, a lot of times you don't see that second-year leap in sometimes in teams. But right now they seem to be making it. We're seeing a lot of teams make some of those second-year leaps. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up as we preview Thursday's contests and the weekend ahead in the Summit. Get ready with boy. From the first shot to the final buzzer, don't miss a moment of the Summit League basketball season. Midco Sports Plus is the streaming home for all your Summit League teams. Subscribe today for exclusive content, expert team analysis, complete game coverage, and every single minute of Summit League action. Subscribe and watch at midcosportsplus.com. 7 o'clock starts across the board on Thursday, and all 16 games this week will air right here on Summit League Network, so plan accordingly. Here's the schedule on the women's side. The front runners in the league go on the road. South Dakota State will be at Omaha, while North Dakota State heads to Denver. 
North Dakota and Oral Roberts should be a fun one between two explosive offenses. And South Dakota heads to St. Thomas as the Coyotes look to bounce back in the win column. It's the same schedule on the men's side, just flipped home and road locations. Omaha at South Dakota State should be a fun battle between Zeke Mayo and Frankie Fiddler in Frost Arena. Oral Roberts heads to Grand Forks to play North Dakota. St. Thomas will be at South Dakota and the nation's top scorer leads Denver to North Dakota State. Let's jump into some game previews for the women. South Dakota State on the road at Omaha. A championship game rematch from a year ago. Grace Cave versus Paige Meyer at the guard position. This should be a good one. Yeah, it should be good. I mean, uh, Omaha, a little bit down right now, yeah. but I think just with what with what we expect from them come postseason time, because I think everyone's kind of come to realize that Omaha is one of those teams where what they do during conference play doesn't always translate into what they're going to do in a postseason play. And I mean that in a good way, where yes. they could be maybe near the bottom, but they'll somehow go on a run come March. So should be interesting, should be fun to watch. Race Cave and a bunch of others missed their last game, so they'll be hopefully they'll be back for this one, and it should be a good one. Omaha went from the sixth place position from the sixth seed in the Summit League Tournament all the way to the championship game last year. North Dakota State heads to Denver to play a struggling Pios team. The Bison have hit their stride lately, and late look really good. Yeah, these are two teams going in opposite directions. I mean, North Dakota State, they look about as good as anybody. I know that they haven't played South Dakota State yet, but if you were to ask me who are the, who's the, playing the best in the Summit League on the women's side, it's the two of them. It's South Dakota State and North Dakota State. And North Dakota State was preseason pick kind of in the middle of the packish area. So huge credit to them for what they've been able to do. On the other side, Denver, they're struggling. They just can't seem to find consistent offense. And, you know, they're turning the ball over a lot. Um, Doja Woods, I, I have faith in her. You know, yeah. she's shown that she has the ability to kind of rally the troops and get it together, you know, unfortunate heartbreaking loss in the tournament last year because I think they maybe could have had something going for them if they, if they were able to get past KC. But... Two teams going in opposite directions, so it could be a get-right game for Denver or it could possibly be a letdown for North Dakota State. And you mentioned that heartbreaking loss at the buzzer, the half-court shot uh, from a, a, really a team of destiny in Kansas City last year. They ended up going to the semifinals from the 10 seed. Casey Baravich will take her explosive North Dakota offense to Tulsa to play a high-powered Oral Roberts team. ORU is coming off of that buzzer-beater loss at St. Thomas. How does a team bounce back like that? against a good UND team. It'll be interesting. I think this is a North Dakota team that has a lot of confidence right now. You know, with the way they've been playing, with the way Casey has been able to kind of get back into the lineup and find her footing, it'll be interesting. I don't think it's going to be maybe the, the the walk in the park that you might think it would be on paper. And Old Roberts, for as much as they were able to steal a win on Thursday in Vermillion, they essentially had the game stolen from them on Saturday. And I don't mean in the sense of bad calls or anything like that. You know, St. Thomas, they had to rally and really just pull that out by by a miracle that yep. went on Saturday afternoon. So uh, should be an interesting one. You know, tough to call. I wouldn't exactly just say, oh, it's going to be oh, it's ORIU's to lose per se. But I think it'll be an interesting game. Uh, if North Dakota shows up, wouldn't be surprised if it was a game that came down to the last couple of possessions. And this one could come down to the last couple of possessions as well. St. Thomas playing really well, winning five of their last six with their only blemish at South Dakota State. South Dakota stumbled at home to Oral Roberts last Thursday. Again, looking for that bounce back. They get that extra. It's almost like a mini buy built in, not having to play on Saturday. South Dakota, this is kind of a get right opportunity for them. Yeah, Kayla Carius has, has been soul searching. And what I mean by that is she said last, last week after losing Oral Roberts, you know, we just need to find that killer instinct, you know, hit that big shot, overcome that hump. Because it, it was really a game where if they take that eight point lead to maybe a 12 point lead, Maybe ORU lays down. Maybe they don't keep fighting the way that they did, and, and maybe they get a win instead of a you know kind of a, a crushing loss. So uh, it could, this could be telling. I think if if South Dakota wants to get back on track, because I said I expect them to finish near the top of the standings at the end of the year, this is one of those games they have to win. You know, playing a good team at home, home crowd with you. Yeah. Um, St. Thomas should be boosted, should be juiced up. You know, coming off that. M miraculous win on Saturday afternoon, so they're going to be pumped up and, and trying to steal one on the road, much like ORU did. So, again, should be one that comes down to the last few possessions, and Coach Karius is going to be looking for that player who can hit that big shot and really put a team away. I don't think there's any doubt in Vermillion in this team that they still have a chance to go out and do something special this year and, and perhaps pick up a piece of hardware in Sioux Falls. This might be the game to circle on the calendar on the men's side. Frankie Fiddler is playing 
better than anyone in the league and really better than anyone in the country at the moment. And Zeke Mayo has been as clutch as it gets. This is going to be a fun one in Frost. Tough environment to go into if you're Omaha. Yeah, if you're on the road, it's always tough to play in Frost. The fans always show up. They're always engaged, and they, they really you know put on a show for their Jackrabbit teams. Uh, but Frankie Filler, if there's anyone that's built for it, it's him. I mean, no matter where the venue has been, I mean, averaging over 30 a game in yeah. conference play is incredibly tough to do because these are teams that are familiar with you. They play you twice a year. They, they watch a ton of film on you. Everyone knows what you're doing. They know all the results. But nonetheless, Frankie's showed up every single game. I'm really looking forward to that one. Should be a, a good battle between the two of them and I think Chris Crutchfield this could be a real signature win for him in his program and as a coach it could be arguably the biggest win of, the, of his career if he's able to pull it off and something that is to keep an eye on also is William Kyle the third he's been playing exceptional basketball lately 10 for 11 uh, from the field at Denver over the weekend even though they lost that game He's been playing at a different level. Yeah, I mean, they played uh, Montana State at home. Yeah. He went nine for nine. Yeah. I, I think he hates missing right now, so that's <laughs> typically a good thing if you're uh, Hendo, and I'm sure he's been letting him know that, hey, whatever you're doing that's making you not miss shots, keep doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. high percentage shots, a lot of slam dunks from William <laughs> Kyle III. Oral Roberts stumbled in a big way at home on Saturday to St. Thomas. They need to bounce back, but they have B.J. Omot and a very good – North Dakota team that I think has some confidence with Omont and Trayson Eaglestaff. Yeah, Trey Eaglestaff and B.J. Omont are a dangerous backcourt duo, and I think that they're one of those types of backcourts where if they get going, it's it's tough to stop. Like They're the type of guys that can both go for 20, 25-plus yeah, each if they both find their footing. The only problem is they haven't really had too many games where they've both been on. You know, There'll be a game where B.J.'s on and Trey's kind of off. Trey's on, B.J.'s kind of off. If they're able to put it together, don't be surprised if they can steal one. But Oral Roberts, they're going to be angry. They're going to be angry. They're going to be fired up. And the, the last thing I would want to face is an angry Kareem Thompson and Isaac McBride because yes. those are guys that – have championship pedigree. They've been in these situations before. They've been near the top of the league, so they've tasted, you know, what it's like to be, you know, the top dog, the ones that are being hunted. The target's really big on their back right now. I expect them to answer the call. And Kareem Thompson, a guy who was one of the final 16, uh, one of the final 16 teams a couple of years ago, an ORU team. We're not talking about them as much as probably we should be today. That's because of their 2-2 two and two standing right now, but this is an opportunity for them to get back into that win column and, and really stamp their name as, hey, we're still here. We're not going anywhere, right? Yeah. St. Thomas has found a different level. They're not going anywhere, and uh, since league play has started, they continue to elevate their game. The only thing keeping them from unbeaten right now is a couple of missed free throws from Raheem Anthony down the stretch against South Dakota State. Yeah, St. Thomas is just one of those teams that – for you know, you know that they're well coached, but I think you're also blown away by how talented they are. Like they've just got. It seems like everyone who who gets the ball on offense is able to create offense for themselves. Is able to get a shot, and if they can't get a shot for themselves, they get a shot for their teammate. And then what also really impresses me is they play defense. You know, their point differential is tops in the Summit League for a reason. You know, they score they score points, but they don't let the other team score points. Typically leads to a lot of wins. And like you said, the only reason they don't have, you know, four wins instead of and, and instead are three and one is because they literally lost at the wire. That's yeah. just how good they are. So St. Thomas, really fun to watch, really just sound team and, and and every time I watch them play, I'm very impressed. And South Dakota needs to figure something out, don't they? Yeah, South Dakota's been searching. You know, this is a team that, you know, Coach Peterson was excited about, you know, the athleticism that they had coming in. And, and, and you know, Caleb Stewart and Boston Holt have been able to light up the scoreboard. But similar to, for North Dakota, you know, between B.J. Omad and Trey Eaglestaff, it's kind of been a similar story for South Dakota where they just can't get their guys to put it together on the same night. It's usually just one or the other. And, and, and something you know something's got to give you know but I, I have faith uh, in Eric Peterson and what he's able to do and what what he can do for that team he's a good coach and I'm sure he'll have his guys ready and and they'll be trying to not just find some answers but I'm sure they'll get the answers they're looking for it seems like South Dakota hasn't really been that same squad that they were really prior to the the California trip when they played Bakersfield and Irvine and, and San Diego uh, going 0-3 on that trip. Well, Tommy Bruner takes Denver to Fargo, and this will be a fun one at North Dakota State 
a pesky North Dakota State team that really doesn't seem to go away. They didn't last week against Kansas City in that double overtime victory. Multiple times it looked like it should have been over. Yeah, I mean, North Dakota State, like I mentioned earlier, struggling to close games and that's the difference between veteran teams that have had that have a lot of experience that have been in those moments before versus teams like North Dakota State who they you know they lose their best player in Grant Nelson and now they're kind of soul searching you know who's going to step up who's going to fill that role those are big shoes to fill we're talking yeah. about an NBA prospect that was on this team a year ago and now he's gone so trying to fill that void it's going to be tough you know right but they need to be find a way you know they're not just getting blown out it's something they're just you know, having no chance in these games. They've been in every game they've played in. It's just a matter of finding a way to close. But Denver, I mean, you talk about their lack of turnovers or rather their lack of ability to turn the ball over. <laughs> going to be tough to beat a team like that because Denver scores a lot, but they take care of the ball. So this is going to be a game where North Dakota State, if they want to win, they're going to have to find a way to either turn Denver over or at least just limit them to, to under, you know, six, 75, 70 points because Denver scores in bunches and they take care of the ball, and that's why they win so many games. And so much depth on this Denver squad. They shoot at such a high clip from the field and from three. And, uh, you know, when they get hot, they're really Dangerous hot, to really watch. hard to stop. Dangerous. All games this week will air on Summit League Network. Make sure you get your tickets now for the Summit League Basketball Tournament at the summitleague.org slash tickets. What a fun week this should be, Darren. A lot of ton, uh, a lot of really good games, good matchups, and I, I think we're going to start to see some separation between the cream of the crop in this league and and the rest. We're about to get into into the real meat of the uh, of conference play. Last weekend, I think some questions were answered, but there's you know with all those answers come new questions. So it should be another really interesting week. I've I've enjoyed what we've seen so far, and I can't wait to see how it all shakes out. It's going to be a ton of fun. Stay with us. We'll be back next week for more Summit League Spotlight. Thanks for joining us.